Okay, guys, so today we're going to start talking about energy. And as you can see, my Bitmoji in the corner and my cat and I, I are full. I didn't realize you had done that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Sorry, when you get me some uh, ahead of time, I start putting things in and messing with things. Okay, Mrs. Murdoch's laughing. That's, that's wonderful. The cell living is a miniature uh, chemical factory where thousands of reactions occur, guys. And you guys have the – you need energy. For everything you're doing, you need energy. Even when you're sleeping and lying in bed and going, I possibly cannot move. You're still using energy. Your heart beating, your breathing, all of that requires energy. Even on a cellular level, things entering and leaving the cell through active transport require energy. Your cell repairing cell parts. It just doesn't happen without energy. All of this stuff happens through the cost of energy. Digestion. Even while you're sleeping, you're digesting food. That causes energy. You eating, even though it's in your stomach, then the mechanical energy of your stomach sort of breaking it down, that is also energy. Any way you think about it. I just moved my pinky toe. That is energy. The re replacing of skin cells as they slough off me. Energy. Okay. Energy is the ability to do work. All energy originates from the sun. Everything. See? Put another little bit emoji down there, too. <laughs> Miss Murdoch just loves it today. Well, she put, gives it to me ahead of time, and I look at it, and I'm like, yeah, I want to put that in there. It seems like kind of fun. Um, so all energy in life originates from the sun. Now, you can't neither create nor destroy energy. What you can do is transform energy. And plants do this through the process of photosynthesis. They transform light energy into chemical energy. Does anybody know that chemical energy really quick? Just review of some things we might know throughout this whole thing what that chemical energy is that lights transform that light is transformed to in plants you can put it in the chat if you think you know what is that chemical energy well now that's the process but what's the chemical energy that's made think about it, it begins with a g and the process is photosynthesis. Glucose. Excellent. So what light is, light is the energy, but what plants do is they convert that light energy, which is light, into a chemical energy called glucose. Rami, you're brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for saving my day today, Rami. Oh, mother of pearls. I was sitting here going, oh, my God, is anybody going to answer me? So all activities need energy of one kind or another. Living things depend on depend on cellular energy to fuel life functions. What are some life functions? Think about it. What are some life functions? We talked about this a little bit ago. Think about, think about what your cells do. Because we talked about some things that your cells do just in the last unit that require energy to do. So I bet you can think of one. Remember the cell transport unit? Is there a type of transport that needs energy? Digestion. A process, right? A process. Growth, reproduction, growth, respiration. Think other respiration, active respiration doesn't really need energy. Respiration transfers energy from food to ATP. That really doesn't belong there. Growth does. That's pretty good. Growth is good. Reproduction is good. Um, metabolism. metabolism. Yep. Active transport. Somebody got it. Who got that one? That's really great. Awesome. Um, yeah, those are things that need energy. You might phagocytosis. Awesome. That is awesome. Yes. Very specific. Really good answer. Um, oh. Other things that a cell might need to do, or what about like muscle contraction? Right. That's something that needs energy. When you're, when you're lifting at the gym, right, like Mr. Bouchard does, so you get swole. I get swole. Mm. See, I can learn these these words. I can. Oh, digest, ingestion. Oh, oh. Great. Awesome. Oh, guys, you are brilliant. And, uh, oh, I knew this group was going to do it. I knew it. I said it all along. I said it. I said it. I said it. I say it again. 
I think you're awake now and you're burning ATP. So some cellular activities like pulling chromatids, like in the cellular level, pulling chromatids apart, and mitosis, muscle contracted, flagellas, a little those little things that look like little rowers on a Viking ship on the outside of the single the unicellular organisms. This is what cilia remind me of. Those require energy. Making proteins, making sugar. Good. Oh, I knew you guys were good. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So what kind of energy is there? There's light energy, which is from the sun, and only autotrophs. What does it mean to be an autotroph, guys? What do you think that means? Think about that word. That word's there. We are, I'll give you a hint. Plants are autotrophs. So, what do you think makes you an autotroph? We're not we're not autotrophs. <laughs> I said plant. I said oh, what, what makes, makes what makes a plant an autotroph? Okay, good. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You can convert to no, they make food from the sun. Mm, well, let's go a little yeah, deeper yeah. than food. Yeah, okay. You can make food. food. Yeah. yeah. So what so glucose. Yeah, okay, Pedro's good. Got it. Good. Pedro's got it. You make your own food. Good, Ethan Lee. Good, good, good. So what happens is now I don't want Pedro or Ethan be going home and going like, look at this. I made some mac and cheese. I'm an autotroph. I made my own food. That's not what it means. And you're you're right. What it means is you can't sit there. They have the cell. They have the organelles that are able to convert and make food on their own. So I can't. Ethan Lee can't go outside and go body make me some cellular energy from the sun. No, that's not how it would work. They have those. They have what they have called chloroplasts and chlorophyll, which allow them to capture the sunlight and convert it. And they're the only organisms that can do that are autotrophs. We are not considered autotrophs. We are considered heterotrophs or because we have to get our energy and our food from another organism. Now there's something called free energy. You guys are sure kinetic energy. That is energy that's doing work. So when I'm lifting weights, I'm using energy. I'm like, ooh, getting slow. Guys, I gotta get a little, you know, I gotta put some steel up there today. Push some steel. You know, I'm gonna get pretty swollen, and jacked. Um, that is using free energy, and that's what your body does. Now, when your body doesn't use it, it's called potential or chemical energy, and stored in the bonds of something called ATP. And those ATP store this energy in their bonds. Energy, if you take anything from what I've just said today, energy is stored in bonds. And let me ask you, if energy is stored in bonds, how do you think you get that energy released? What do you think you have to do to those bonds if it's stored in the bonds? So I can put it in the chat. Oh, wait a second. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? You got it. I'll give you a second. So if energy is stored in bonds, how do you think your body gets that energy out of that stored bond? What do you think you have to do to that bond? Think about it. Break them. Yes. Exactly. It's so simple it's hard. I get it. It's so simple it's hard. Yeah. When you store the energy in bonds, you break it. Yes, you break the bonds, and that's how the energy is released. You're exactly right, Rami. And what <laughs> happens? Like right. You see this, and we'll get into it more when we get into the next lesson. But yeah, there's a better picture oh, later. Pedro. Oh, Rami. Oh, wait. Sorry, Pedro. Sorry. Oh my gosh, Pedro. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I'm sorry. Um, yes, Pedro. But you're exactly correct. You break the bond, and that's how the energy is released. It's so simple, it's difficult sometimes. <laughs> so go ahead, try this answer. Why don't we just give credit to Rami for everything said right today, even if Pedro says it. <laughs> a lot of them we are giving good answers. Let's see what our response is. Okay. Oh, good, we have 12 out of 19. Let's see what we have. I would go with light energy. That's it? Yeah, light, light energy. energy. 
Excellent. That's the energy. You guys are brilliant. I knew it. Miss Murdoch was like, they don't know what they're talking about. And I'm like, Miss Murdoch, they do. No, they don't. <laughs> All right. Which type of energy is stored in a covalent bond of glucose molecule? Ooh. That pie right there is making me hungry for pie. I love pie more than cake. I think pie is better than cake. When it's well made, I love pie. I made that pie. Ooh. I think oh, pie is more versatile than cake. <laughs> There's such a wide range of pies. Cake can be bad or good. There's always pies, always pie. So, well, wait, do we have our responses yet? Okay, good. Let me go see. Let me see. Show responses. Potential. Yes. Because it's Beautiful, in there, right? it's being stored. Nicely done, guys. Nicely done. A lot of sugars in there with all kinds of bonds holding their molecules together and all kinds of potential energy stored in the sugars of that pie, which then gets released when you eat the pie and then you go for a run afterward. Right? Because that's what yeah, you do after you eat pie. <laughs> Last night I ate brownies with Nutella and whipped cream. Oh my gosh, I I was we just carved out last night. We just we ate we had pizza, and um and then we had um oh god I made cookies afterwards and the boys and I all ate oh my god it was so bad. Lots of potential yeah. energy in the form of carbohydrates going into the Murdoch family last night. Yeah, we ate pizza and then my wife goes upstairs. My mom had given us brownies. She goes, I have Nutella and whipped cream. Oh. Would you like me to put some witness on the brownies That's and then whipped like, cream? It's like, woof. <laughs> oh, it's a lot right of in the corner. Also, guys, if you ever get kicked out, if you look up in the right-hand corner of the uh, BBC, there will always be the code for the uh, – Thing. So don't worry. Um, just the thought. So if you need it, also if I'm in the middle of something. But there you go. Oh yeah. What are we talking about? Okay. Now, see, so got me all talking. Oh, look at that boy. Look, which type of energy would the dog, would this dog use to get up off of his bed? Oh God. There's my the dog. There's my beautiful dog who died last December. We miss him so much. He's in a better place, more relaxed. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have a new doggie now. I don't, I didn't, I probably should have uploaded a picture of her. She's, she's got very high energy. <laughs> Maybe I'll show you. I got exactly her. opposites. But this dog, he was the greatest. He was the greatest. It is a great Pyrenees, Sydney. You're right. You may have met him. I brought him in just before Christmas la um, that year. Sydney may have been in the class then. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he was. But yeah, but no, he's a great dog. Mm -hmm. Oh, so great. Uh, Everybody loved him. Yeah, but yeah, kinetic oh, energy is very good. <laughs> yeah, now Miss Murdoch has the opposite, Pedro, of – the dog being like tired and quiet now it's yippy and like always wants to be everywhere oh yeah she's she just jumps around all the time <laughs> oh dash hound oh yo puppy dog i love doggies it's all right really nice. a living organism is always in need of useful energy brainstorm what molecules have we learned about that are useful for quick energy Ooh, ooh, think about it what molecules <laughs> There's more than one right answer here. There's more than one right answer here. <clears throat> Hide it for a second. Some people want to write. So yeah, they don't feel yeah. Conscious. Glucose. <clears throat> That's one. Mitochondria, mitochondria is not a molecule. Mitochondria is a cell organelle that does have to do with energy, but it's not a molecule. There you go. Excellent. Glucose. I, I, Can you think of another one? There's others too yeah, yeah, yeah. that you could put down. Glucose What's isn't the, the only sugar, right? Milk. Mm. Oh, carbohydrates. Okay. Carbohydrates, correct. It's a more of a category. Yes. 
Yes, yes, that's correct. But I'm wondering if you remember a particular molecule. There, somebody got it. Yes. Okay, remember looking for molecules, not processes. ATP, active transport's a process. ATP is a molecule. Mm -hmm. Good. And you also could have said, like, you could have said starch. Um, oh, caffeine, that's an interesting one. I hadn't thought of that. Um, starch, uh, fructose, lactose, sucrose, um, any kind of carbohydrate. And ATP was the other one I was really looking for. So Good I job. think we can go. Really nice job, guys. Good brainstorming. All right, ATP versus glucose. How are they used? Guys, ATP is what we use for cellular energy. So what happens is we take in the glucose, we then use it through a process called cellular respiration, and we're going to talk more about that, aerobic and anaerobic, but we then use it to charge up our ATPs in our body. So, but we're going to get more into that. So glucose is what we can ingest. I, can I add something? Sure. Okay, so um, we're going to get into this in a minute. Mr. Bouchard is going to explain it brilliantly, I'm sure. But I just wanted to make a point here that I um, that I think would be useful for you. This is the ATP. Can, can they see the arrow moving? My arrow is moving. I guess. I can see. Okay, good. So the ATP molecule that Mr. Bouchard is showing you is like a rechargeable battery. Most of these bonds in the ATP molecule do not get broken. It all stays intact. The way that you use energy from an ATP molecule is you only break one bond. It's right where Mr. Bouchard is showing it, right there. Uh, it's, I think it's on the left side of the oxygen that actually gets broken off, right there. Sorry. So that last P with the O's around it gets broken off. That's the only bond that gets broken. But that is just the right amount package of energy to help run other things in the cell that might be going on right nearby. Like right nearby in the cell cytoplasm, there might be um, there might be an enzyme that needs help putting a protein together, and if you break off a phosphate, that gives just the right amount of energy to help the enzyme do that one little job in the cytoplasm. And there's millions of little jobs in the cell cytoplasm that need ATP to lose that phosphate and give energy so that that little job can happen. That's how ATP is used in the cell. Now, glucose down on the left, this corner here, glucose, now you listed that that's also used for energy. That's true, but it doesn't work quite the same as ATP. If glucose is sitting next to an enzyme that's trying to put a protein together, it's not going to be able to break, break off something and give energy. That's not the way glucose works. Instead, glucose goes into a set of reactions that Mr. Bouchard told you called cell respiration. And every single bond in this glucose molecule, all these lines connecting C's and O's and H's together, they all get broken. And since we know energy is stored in every single bond, that means that we're using all of the potential energy in this glucose molecule. We're breaking these bonds one by one by one and then using that energy to take phosphorus and stick them back on the ATP molecule after it lost it. Okay, so this is the first time you'll hear this, and I know you don't quite get it yet, but we're going to go over it again and again. Don't worry. But that's how these two molecules are used. ATP stays intact. It doesn't get broken down. It loses that last phosphate. But glucose down here gets totally broken down. Every bond is broken. Okay, thanks, Mr. Bouchard. No problem. So, drag the dot that can be used to directly, Ms. Murdoch just used this, to direct, drag a dot to the molecule that can be used directly to fuel active transport. Remember, active transport requires energy. Drag a dot to the membrane across, drag a dot to the molecule. Yeah. That could be you. <laughs> Which one? This one down here or this one up Which here? Which one? can give a little bit of energy to fuel that one little cell job right at the membrane. Little job in the cell, which one of these can be directly used to supply that little bit of energy that cell transport needs? 
Ooh. Mm -hmm. Who's going to try? What are we going to try? What do you think? I got seven out of 21. I need a more majority. So we all think up there? <laughs> are we all right? Do we think we're right? Do we think we're right? You are right. That, that is right. We are. Yes. Yeah, the ATP molecule can directly fuel. The glucose can't, but the ATP molecule can. The glucose is used to charge this guy back up once he's used. There you go. Brilliant. All right, drag it out to the molecule that's completely broken down to CO2 and H2O <laughs> by cellular respiration. So, oh, you spelled respiration wrong. I made a typo. I know. I thought I'd Gosh. Oh, well. Well, you know, if this that's a Cornell education for you. They try to spell <laughs> new words. It's respiration. You know, I, can't, I yeah. can never spell tomorrow correctly either. There's too many double consonants. I always get it wrong. Oh. And sincerely, I have the worst time spelling sincerely and tomorrow oh. and oof. Ah. I've tried to talk with those words. But I can uh, write them. You know, they, 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 <laughs> they worry about bigger words at Cornell. You know, at JMU, <laughs> we only work that. We only use oh, yeah, that's hard one too. <laughs> Anything with double consonants gets me. Sorry. All right, so the beginning. So which got the molecule that is completely broken down into CO2 and H2O by cellular respiration? So which one of these two molecules would be broken down during a process of cellular respiration? Yes! Yay! You got it! Awesome! It's the glucose Brilliant. molecule. Every bond is broken. Excellent. Good. Looks like a bunch of chicken pox. Yep. <laughs> This is a bit more advanced, and you don't really have to have to know this, but some people are curious about it. Did you want to talk about this one? I, I can't say that word. Uh, phosphorylating. What we wind up teaching you guys is that when you break the phosphate off, it releases energy. But what's really happening is that third phosphate is so loosely held, and that's what makes ATP so useful. That third phosphate comes off really easily because it's unstable. And then when it reconnects to something else, it activates that molecule. Phosphates have a way of doing that. So there's a little bit of knowledge for you that I probably won't test you on, but that's how it actually works. And it's called phosphorylating? Did I say that? Ugh. Yeah, sticking a phosphate on something is called phosphorylating. And that's an, that's an AP level um, thing, but I thought maybe some of you might be curious about that. Um, next time you try to text me, I'm going to be like, sorry, I'm phosphorylating. <laughs> Is that the same as exfoliating? Yes, it is. I use a loofah, but instead I use a glucose molecule. <laughs> All right, the structure of ATP. ATP is called adenosine triphosphate. Why, and why do you think it has tri in there? What does that mean? This is just part of looking at words in general. When you see the word tri, what are you thinking? Three. Yes. Yes. I knew you were right. Excellent job. Excellent job, all you Ramis and Ethan. So, what that means is identizing triphosphate has three phosphates in the cell's energy shuttle. So, if it's ATP, means there's look. I can see on here like one, two, three. So this is a full ATP molecule. This is full. It has the three ATPs. And it has a sugar, this ribose sugar, which you might have seen when you were looking at that glucose molecule. You might have seen that middle part looking very similar because it does. It has this sugar, ribose sugar. And ribo, remember, sugars tend to have ring shapes or they could be, they have, tend to have shapes that are, that can be similar. Sorry, we're just going to go with that. Yep, I got you. I remembered this time. And then <laughs> adenine. And then adenine is a nitrogenous base, and that's this guy right up here with all these N's. But the biggest part about this, you need to know, is it has three P's, which makes this adenosine triphosphate. And that third P, what's stored at that third P? Somebody put it in the talk. What is stored in that third P again? Somebody put it in the chat for me. Energy. 
Oh, what was that? I heard somebody whisper it. Energy, yes, Ethan. Thank you. Energy. All right. So, drag a red dot to the terminal phosphate. Drag a blue dot to the ribose, and drag a green dot. Ah, see, I knew you were, Ethan. I knew it. Totally, I had faith in you. Totally, totally. And then drag a green dot to the adenine. Oh, and then Rami's laughing again. Rami number two. I'm going to change that in the, in the sign in from now on, so it has to be Rami number two. All right, let's go ahead. Drag the red dot to the terminal phosphate, blue to ribose, and green. The one on the end. Terminal means the one on the end, just so they know, because that's a big word there. Oh, sorry, terminal. Sorry. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, almost done. Yeah, they're doing pretty well. That's good. All right, what do we mm -hmm. got here? What do we got here? Adenine has Should nitrogen be. in it, if that helps. The adenine has nitrogens in it, and the ribose doesn't. And then the terminal phosphate, the red dots should go all the way on the end where that last P is, right? So the reds go way over there. The greens go on the one with the double ring with the N, that's the adenine. And the blue goes on that pentagon-shaped sugar, which is the ribose. That's great, guys. You did it. You now have the structure of an ATP molecule. Excellent. And then notice what happens. This is the process. So... What happens is when we use energy, this bond breaks right here, like Miss Murdoch talked. The P, the last P breaks off. It's a little unstable. And then we add oxygen. Sorry, I can't see. My light keeps, oh, my gosh, keeps shining on my screen. Sorry. And then when you add H2O back in, you're adding on uh, the, wait, wait, that's breaking it off. Sorry. I can't see on my thing. Is that breaking it off? I can't, Miss Murdoch, I'm glaring. Is that breaking it off? Yes, yes, it's breaking off. This is called hydrolysis, right? So hydrolysis is when you add water, the blue water is coming in, and it causes the phosphate to break apart from the other two. See how it breaks apart? So break with water. It's just showing you the, the actual details of the reaction of how you'd get the phosphate off. That's all. All right. Sorry, I couldn't see. There's a glare. I might need you to help me if uh, I tell you there's like some thing. It's like glare from the sun. I'm okay, like, oh, I'm right here. So how is energy released from ATP? Draw a circle around the part of the molecule when removed can give energy to a nearby process or reaction. Ooh, remember we just oh, talked about this. Get to draw, guys. <laughs> just talked about this. Nope. No, nope, that's there. not what breaks, off, what breaks off. What breaks off, guys? Nope. 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 There we go. This is my yes. The terminal nope. the phosphate on the end is what breaks off. Not all three. Not all of them. Choose tightly. It's just the last one on the end there. That's the one that comes off. That's okay. This is no. guys. You're you're awesome for trying. <laughs> nice face. Okay, yeah, that's it. There you go. Yep, good. You got it. Oh, Left yep, phosphate. better. Terminal phosphate. There you go. Or if you get good. it wrong, you can fix it. Last that's phosphate. Right. Like the... There you go. Okay, good. Good job, guys. Thank you. Hey, I, I don't mind if you get it wrong. What I don't, what I want you to do is participate and make sure you try, because then you just learn. It's if you try, like you get the hundred. All you gotta do is try. Yeah. It's like when you play a sport. You don't. You're not great at it right away. You're not great at the violin. Miss Murdoch is has professional CDs and is in a band, or has a group. She wasn't great when she first. I mean, she might have been. She's Miss Murdoch. So <laughs> she may not have been great at her violin the first time, but as she gets more into it and uses it more and, and better and better. So you get better understanding. So trying first step is the first step. To success. Now, I feel sorry for my parents. It must have been painful. Oh, middle school. A kid uh, learning instrument for the first time. Oh. Oh, I'm telling you, I went to my niece's middle school uh, orchestra concerts. I will tell you mm -hmm. any secret I ever have to never have to go to one of those again. <laughs> 
it is god awful. My mom would oh, go. Oh yeah, you know, going to the concerts of the the elementary school string concerts. <laughs> and, and everybody, all the other parents are sitting there applauding and cheering, and Daryl and I are sitting there just pasting smiles on our faces and going, oh, God, this is horrible. <laughs> it's so horrible, but yay, yay for the kids. <laughs> yeah, if I hear hot cross buns one more oh, darn time. Get me out of here. <laughs> oh, she plays the viola, hmm. I believe. I started playing the viola in the seventh grade, yes. And she has CDs out. I know you probably don't know what CDs are anymore, guys. <laughs> that's true. They might not. <laughs> she has albums. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Yeah. They have a band and they have albums. Records. Now, I don't know if she has records. And I don't know. I forget. What was the band called, Miss Murdoch? The Shrinking, the Shrinking Violets? Drinking violets. Yep. Drinking yep. violets. Right. Oh, yeah. I went to her house and listened to. No, not a VHS player. Ethan Lee. <laughs> Actually, speaking of VHS players, really quick, did you know that's how they used to take sonograms and stuff still? Is the VHS player because the oh, quality yeah. is so much better when recording. That is, that is cool, isn't it? Yeah, like I was getting like an EKG done on my heart when I get my physical yeah. done. And when they do like those things for babies to be born, they hear that, you know, when they put that gel on you, you hear, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's all recorded yeah. on VHS recorders. And I looked at the lady and go, why is this so dated? She goes, no, this is the best quality. It's better than the other. I'm like, that's fascinating. She's like, so the whole reason they still make VHS stuff is for medical industry. Are you going to look at the answers? Or did we already do that? I can't remember. No, we haven't got sorry. 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 So how does hydrolysis I got I, I got think we actually asked this question already, didn't we? We probably we did it already, I think. What types of cells? Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. All right. The regeneration of ATP. So what happens at the body just doesn't get rid of the A so after the uh broken, you now have down the two P's and it's called ADP. And it just doesn't get thrown away. It's not like your body Oh, we're done with that. We shall toss it in the trash. No. <laughs> what happens is that a it's now become ADP once that one phosphate's released. So adenosine diphosphate, which means two, it then goes back into the process of cellular respiration and gets recharged up. It's sort of like a rechargeable battery for your body. These ATP molecules are reused and reused until they can't be used anymore or they're broken down. Then they're then then at that point they're then dispersed but in the beginning they are reused and reused like a rechargeable battery until they can no longer be reused your body is very efficient at using whatever it can now ATP's renewable source is generated by additional phosphates okay excellent sorry the regeneration if you took the phosphate off you have to have a way to put it back the energy to phosphorylate ADP comes most directly from what do we think? What do we think? <laughs> Cellular respiration. Oh, felt it right this time. <laughs> Yay, me. Good job, guys. Good job. That's right. I knew That's you were cellular respiration job is to stick phosphates back onto ADPs to make ATP again. That's Very what cellular respiration does. You guys are so smart. All right. I'm going to click this video. Can I click it? Uh, yeah, it's a good one. You don't need to watch the whole thing. Just about halfway through, and it gives them what they need. I think it might not come up in this window, though. Um, I'm stopping sharing while it's doing its Grammarly thing. Hold on, it's got to do the. I should have just opened it oh. ahead of time. Grammarly commercials, yeah, the bane yeah. of my existence. Right. <laughs> oh, no, not share files. Share application. Make sure you share audio. Oh yeah. There we go.
If you want me to pause anything, Ms. Murdoch, please let me know. The ATP cycle. So let's begin with a molecule called ADP. ADP is adenosine diphosphate, and it has two phosphate groups. Now we're going to convert this to ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which has three phosphate groups. So to show that visually, here's what we can do. I'm going to put A for adenosine and the two phosphate groups there. ATP has three phosphate groups. Now, in order to make ATP from ADP, we need an inorganic phosphate. Now, ATP has more energy than ADP. So in order to go from ADP to ATP, we need to put energy in to this process. So because we're putting energy in, this is going to be an endergonic reaction or an endergonic process. Anytime energy is absorbed in a reaction, you have an endergonic reaction. Now, let's talk about the other part of the cycle, converting ATP to ADP. In this case, we need to lose a phosphate group. So a phosphate group is going to come out of the cycle. Now, on the first half or on the left side, we put in energy to make ATP. So in this case, energy is going to come out. The right side is basically the reverse of the left side. So we're going from a molecule that has more energy to a molecule that has less energy. So thus energy will be released. Now, because we're releasing energy, that process is known as an exergonic process. Anytime energy is released in a reaction, it's an exergonic reaction. Now, there's one more thing that we need, and that is water. Okay, stop it right there, because they don't need that. You stop it right there. Just freeze the screen. Okay, awesome. So um, this is the exact diagram that I put into, it's, it's very close to the diagram that I put into your, your single screen homework assignment, where you're going to click and drag things into the right places, and it's going to look just like this, except that there's a couple things that he didn't talk about that I want to add here. Um, so on the left side, arrow the left side and underline the energy going in, right? So the energy that's going in, that's sticking the phosphate back on to make the ATP, that energy is coming from the process of what? What process is sticking the phosphates back on? You just learned it. Put it in the chat. That's a molecule, not a process. I'm looking for the process that every living thing has to do that makes the ATP that sticks the phosphate back onto the ADP to make ATP. Starts with an R. Yes, that's right. So respiration goes on the left side over here. That's how the energy is used from glucose to stick the phosphates back on to make ATP. So respiration goes on the left side. That's the source of energy. Glucose is the source of energy, but the process that puts it back on is on the left. On the right side, what he didn't mention, what I'm going to add, is that that energy that is released, what is that energy used for? And the answer is a million different things. Energy is, is used for cell work, which can include the things that you guys said, like cell active transport, like muscle contractions, like growth, like breathing, like your heartbeat, all those things right, require ATP energy. So there's a lot of types of cell work over here, right? There's a lot of ways to use the ATP when that energy is released. There's only one way on the left to get the phosphate back on, and that's respiration. Okay, thanks, Mr. Bouchard. Let's finish up the last slide then. Okay, sorry, give me a second. I gotta go back to share. Oh. Uh, eh. Eh. 
so many. Share audio. There we go. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. The way in which a cell uses ATP can be compared to waiting for responses. Burning a piece of paper. Ooh, I personally like the chocolate cake. I just anytime I see chocolate cake. But I don't think that's the answer. But I'm a chubby man, so my chubbiness is going to always go towards chocolate cake. But I, I think the answer is rechargeable battery. I'm going to go rechargeable battery. Yes. Excellent, guys. It is rechargeable battery is what it is. Excellent. That's it. Excellent. You got it. We definitely need a break now, Mr. Pichard. <laughs> Oh, bless anyway, you. My goodness. I wasn't in the room there. Yeah. Woo. Passing along my epithelials. Okay.